and join us during the service. We hope, above all, that today's service helps you experience Jesus in a life-changing way. Hello, welcome to Eagle Life Church. I am so thankful that you have joined us today for this worship service. Please grab your phone right now and save this number in your contacts, 208-352-6002. Name that contact, ELC text message. This will help you interact with the church during social isolation and really anytime. You can use this phone number to give, you can join a life group by texting life group, or you can text the word prayer, click the link and fill out the form so that we can pray for you. If you'd like to join a life group, we have some exciting groups that are happening right now. We have groups that are happening with kids on Marco Polo. Our ladies book club continues to meet weekly on Thursday nights. We want you to join us, not just on Sunday morning, but throughout the week by being a part of our life groups. And finally, would you connect with us online? Check out eaglelifechurch.org, like our page on Facebook, or follow us on Instagram at Eagle Life Church. We hope that today's service helps you experience Jesus in a life-changing way. you stand with me? And we're going to enter into worship this morning. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different today to help people since uh, we had to go back to stage three because of the increase in coronavirus. We just thought it would be good for people to have a way to communicate. All I want is a smile and wave. And so if you see somebody with one of these bright yellow smiley faces, that means just smile and wave, no handshakes or hugs today. Um, and as time goes on, maybe you won't wear a sticker. Maybe you'll, one Sunday you will. And this is a way for us to just show love to one another and understand that each of us are in a different place with this. Each of us has our own medical concerns, our own uh, weights of career and family. 
and people at risk in our families. And this is a way for us to be sure that we're not violating someone else's boundaries and uh, hurting them in any way. So would you just respect that and show love to one another when you see these bright, smiley faces and uh, give them a smile and a wave and all the love and encouragement you can, but from a distance. So that's gonna be a part of things going forward, at least for the time being, and you'll always be able to find one of those out uh, on the table as you enter, as well as masks, if you'd like a mask at any time. And there's also hand sanitizer stations all throughout the building so that you can be sanitized and clean. As we begin today, I want to invite everybody watching online or in person to text CHECK sometime during today's service. Let us know that you're here. And when you do that, it will take you to the church website when you're all finished with links for today's uh, service, a scripture outline, and a link to the YouVersion app so that you can follow along with today's scripture and sermon. We also have asked the question today, what is the best gift? that you have, most useful gift you've ever received and why. For me, it was a car. I've actually been given three cars in my lifetime. And every time it was super useful and really needed and got me a lot of places, helped me keep a job and all those important things. And so it was a really useful gift. So if you're watching online, share in the comments, what is one of the most useful gifts you've ever received? And we'd love to hear that. And for those of you who are in person, Sometime during today's service, you can talk to someone who's here and share with them a useful gift you've received. Well, let's begin today by reading from Scripture. Today we're going to be reading the words of Jesus from John chapter 14, verses 6 uh, through 14, and we're going to skip a little bit in the middle where Philip asks him a question. But these are the words of Jesus to his apostles about who he is and what he expects uh, out of those who know him. Would you join me? And if you're watching online, say these words with us out loud together as we worship God through reading scripture. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Would you join me in prayer? Oh, there's one more, sorry, let's read that last one. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Let's pray. Let's ask the Father to show up in, by His Spirit's power today. Jesus, we come to you and we invite your presence to fill each heart, to fill each life, to come upon each family and to be in us and among us as we gather today. For our friends who are joining us online, fill their living room, fill, fill their bedroom. If they're at work today, listening on headphones as it's the, the service is streaming in their pocket, God, I pray that your spirit would show up in power in their heart, even as we worship, as we study your word, and as we pray for one another. God, we ask, for great and miraculous things to be done here as they are in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's worship together. Through you the blind will see, through you the mute will sing, through you the dead will rise, through you our hearts will praise. Through you the darkness flees, through you my heart screams, I am free. Let's sing that again because we are free this morning. Through you the blind will see, through you the mute will sing, through you the dead will rise, through you all hearts will praise. Through you the darkness flees, through you my heart screams, I am free, I am free. All right, just declare it, I'm free. I am free to run, I am 
God, this morning, we just shake off all that may be trying to hold us back this morning, whether it be fatigue or fear or just the troubles that surround us and and keep us distracted. God, we throw all that away and just focus our eyes on you this morning and worship you for the good father that you are.
solid rock. Jesus, we rejoice at your name. We rejoice at your name. We wave a banner of glory before your throne. You are mighty, worthy is the Lamb who is slain to take away the sins of the world. Jesus, you're mighty. Jesus, you're glorious. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh God, your name is great. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy, Jesus. Jesus, you're perfect. You're perfect, God. You're perfect. Let's sing that chorus again. You're a good, good Father. It's who you are. Lift your voices who together. You sing it out wherever you are. It's, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. Good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Sing that refrain, you're perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. Declare that over your brokenness. Declare that over your sickness and pain. Jesus, Jesus, you're perfect to us. Sing that one more time with all the faith you can muster. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. 
Father, we join with Job and we say, blessed is the Lord. Blessed are you when you give and blessed are you when you take away. And Lord, we may not in our human understanding get a grasp for why you do what you do, but in faith, we declare you are perfect in all of your ways. And so we rely on you. We depend not on our own understanding, but in your knowledge and in your peace and in your understanding. We rest in you. Thank you, Jesus, for being our good, good Father, for caring for us, for nurturing us, and for providing. You promise to give us all that we ask when we ask in your name. So we put our faith in your provision. We put our faith in your answer. Jesus, we love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are glorious. Amen. Amen. Church, there's going to be some prayer needs on the screen. And as we finish up our time of worship, we want to intercede for those in our missions work and those who are um, within our congregation. And so take a look at these. First of all, our mission's focus this month is Paul and Sandy Kazim. Uh, they're missionaries to Mexico City who haven't been able to leave yet. They're stuck in Southern California, so please be praying for them. I have a greeting that they recorded for us on video that I'm going to share uh, on social media this week, so be watching for that. Then uh, I also would like to ask you to pray for our coronavirus and healthcare workers, and especially the Boise Rescue Mission. Uh, this is a homeless shelter and rehabilitation home here in the Treasure Valley, and they had uh, one of their residents come down with COVID, and it was spread to eight other highly at-risk uh, sick people who were living at the mission, and so um, that has started to spread there. They've quarantined those who were already testing positive, and they're having to test all the staff and the other residents, and so it's pretty disruptive. Please pray for them. They're the only mission in Idaho that can quarantine sick people, and so they were well-equipped for this. And praise the Lord, uh, it's only been limited to nine people. So uh, we're going to be praying that that doesn't continue. And then pray for our government, the elections that are happening this year, and race relations, and the civil unrest that's tearing apart uh, some of the cities of America. And then pray for physical healing for those names that are up there. Some of them are recovering. Some of them are facing uh, new sicknesses. And we just want to keep interceding for them. And then I know in the congregation there are no other needs. So just pray for one another. Would you do that? And if this morning somebody shared a prayer request uh, as you were having a conversation during the service or chatting online in the comments, pray for one another as we go to this time of intercession. Let's pray. Lord, you know each of these needs. God, you see from heaven what's happening in each person's life and in their heart. God, you see the civil unrest. You see the elections as if they were today. And God, we know that you hold all things in your hand and you can accomplish your will on earth as it is in heaven. And so Jesus, we pray for Paul and Sandy Kazim. We pray for the Boise Rescue Mission. We pray for our healthcare uh, workers and all those who are responding to the coronavirus. God, give wisdom and guidance. Give them protection. We pray that this disease would not uh, take any more lives. God, we ask you to perform a miracle and eradicate this virus from the human uh, body, <laughs> from the body of humanity, Jesus. Eradicate this virus. Stop it in its tracks, we pray. And Lord, we also pray for the personal needs for those in our congregation who are facing job transitions, those who are fighting sickness and cancer, uh, those who have colds and allergies. Lord, those who have had knee replacement or eye surgery, God, we ask that your hand stretch down from heaven, that you would bring healing to their bodies, provision to their families, and that your miracles would proclaim your glory in each of our lives. We trust you for it, Jesus, and believe you to do great things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for praying. You can be seated. If you're uh, joining us online, now you can chat in the comments and let us know your answer to the question of the day. Well, I am excited today to wrap up, uh, Lord willing, our series on being filled with the Spirit. We've been talking about what it means to be filled with the Spirit over the last six weeks, and today will be number seven. I would love for you to join me in the YouVersion app. 
One easy way to get there is to text CHECK to 352-6002, check in your family, hit submit, and then after you finish that, it will take you to the church website where right there, there's a link under sermon notes that you can click on and it will take you to the YouVersion app or you can just pull up the YouVersion app and it knows your location and you can uh, see today's notes. There's a calendar of upcoming events on there so you know what's going on. There's links to our church website where you can join a life group or give online and be a part of today's service. If you would like to give this morning as part of your worship, you can do that by giving online. There's several ways to make that happen. You can just visit the church website and click on Give Now, and that will take you there. Or you can text the word GIVE to 208-352-6002, and texting the word GIVE will get the process started and walk you right through that. If you brought cash or a check and you would like to give that, we aren't passing offering bags at church any longer because of the spread of the virus, but there is a giving box at the back of the room where you can uh, drop off a in-person gift, and it's locked up, and we will empty that on Wednesday when we do our deposit, and that'll give it time between today and Wednesday for any bacteria or viruses to die on your checks or cash. So uh, check that out and make sure that you're a part of that. The Holy Spirit is God's personal, powerful presence in our lives today. The Holy Spirit is God present. They called Jesus Emmanuel, God with us, and today the Holy Spirit is Emmanuel. He's with us. It's God with us. We called Jesus, we call Jesus God in the flesh. But when the Holy Spirit is in us, we have God in the flesh. The Holy Spirit alive in us. And we talked about how the Holy Spirit helps us in our flesh. Uh, what are some of the ways that you heard me talk over the last few weeks about how the Holy Spirit helps us in our flesh? Any ideas? Gives us the words to say. He empowers our tongue to speak. Thank you. That's great. What else did we learn that the Holy Spirit does in our flesh to help us? You didn't think you were coming to a classroom this morning, did you? He convicts us, that's right. When we're stuck in sin, when we're uh, wrapped up in our own selfishness, the Holy Spirit reveals that to us. Very good, thank you. What else have you heard over the last few weeks? Comfort. Comfort, yeah, that was a big topic one of the weeks. He comforts us with groanings too deep for words. How else does the Spirit help us? He counsels us. Yeah, he's our counselor. He gives us advice and helps us to discern wise things and decisions. Any other thoughts? If you're watching online, join us. Tell us in the comments what you remember from the last few weeks. These are all really powerful ways that the Holy Spirit can help us. He speaks to us and he is here now to do that. Last week, we also talked about the fruit of the Spirit. You remember? I almost destroyed Melissa's grapes when I threw them on the ground. Some of you are afraid I was going to smash an orange into this beautiful carpet up here. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is the character of God that just grows on your life when you're submitted to His Spirit. When His presence is in you, then you grow fruit. And Scripture calls it bearing fruit. You bear it, you grow it, and then the world has a harvest of tasty, nutritious, vibrant fruit to enjoy and partake of and to live off of as the Spirit grows His fruit in our life. Well, today we're going to cover a topic that could probably be a seven-week sermon series all on its own, okay? And to try and help us not cram that all into one day, um, I provided some resources online. And so if you're in the YouVersion app, uh, you can see that there's a link to our website. But also on our church website, I put some Discover Your Spiritual Gifts tools out on our website where you can make use of those tools to learn more in depth about what we're talking about today. And if I get enough feedback from this sermon, then this fall, when we're able to meet again in person, or maybe, maybe we could do it earlier, um, depending on the response, I would like to do another shape a class, which we did in the spring, which, or in the winter, I'm sorry, about discovering your spiritual gifts and how you can learn who you are and study God's Word and find out maybe the calling 
that God has for your life. And so if there's some feedback off of today's sermon, um, rather than doing another seven-week series on just the spiritual gifts, we'll do a special class on that um, if there's enough interest. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. But we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. And I've been asking you to share uh, what was the most useful gift that you got in your life. I heard a few interesting ones this morning. Someone said a phone case was the most uh, most useful gift that they got because it protected their phone from getting smashed. And they showed me why they needed a phone case because their phone was all smashed. (laughs) And so I don't know if they were just speaking out in faith of what a great useful gift would be because their phone was busted at the moment. They need a case. So they didn't get one yet. They need one. And someone else said that their most useful gift was a chair um, that they use in their, their office bedroom that they can sit in. And then someone else said that their most useful gift was a toothbrush. And I thought, yeah, that's a really useful gift, but I'm not sure if it's a gift. <laughs> I'm, I, I know if I gave my wife a toothbrush on our anniversary, she would probably not be super excited about that. Now, I know a guy who loved fishing, and every year he gave his wife a new fishing pole for their anniversary, and she never fished. <laughs> so that wasn't very useful, was it? It was a useful gift for him, yeah, but she was not very appreciative for that fishing pool that she got every year on their anniversary. It was really his fishing pool. So what about the gifts of the Spirit? What does Scripture say about the gifts that the Spirit gives, and are they something that is useful, or are they romantic? Now, as I was thinking about the idea of gifts, I was thinking that I think that there might just be two kinds of gift people in the world. There's the gift people who love the romantic, not useful gift. You know, the the fragrant cut flowers that will only last a week. Oh, those are romantic. We just love them. They bring beauty to our home, but they're not useful. And then there's the people who like love the useful gift. Last uh, Sunday was Father's Day, and I got a very special useful gift from my kids They know that I often spend a lot of time sitting at my desk studying, so I'm like seated, and I need breaks. I need to move. I need to change my position. One of the things I miss about being the media director that I was in a previous job, and even a kid's pastor, is that it was much more active. Like you had to be more active than pastoring. Around here, the times that I'm active is when I have to stack chairs or mow the lawn or uh, replace a light bulb that's burned out over here uh, that I noticed this morning. Now you're all looking at it. So. Uh, those are the times I'm active, but a lot of my work is like sitting or at a computer on it or reading a book. And so I've noticed that I really like standing when I'm working on my computer, but sometimes it's too much and I need to sit. And so, that, you know, there's pieces of furniture in the house that I've learned that I can stand at them. And so I'll like awkwardly be standing in the middle of the kitchen on a counter with my computer and books because I can stand there. And so my family got me an awesome, useful gift last Father's Day. And it is a desk that can be seated or standing. And so you just push a button and it goes. So if any of you ever join me on a Zoom meeting or something, you know, you may watch me go out of the picture as my desk just slowly rises up um, as I'm sitting in my chair. It's awesome. I love it. And another great benefit is my dog, Muffin, also loves my new desk. And so while I'm sitting there, she curls up at the bottom and, like, keeps my feet warm because the air conditioning vent is right underneath. And that's been wonderful. So I got a really useful gift that's going to make a difference in my study. It's going to help me grow as a person because I'm going to be moving more when I'm uh, sitting at my desk. And so even Friday, as I sat at my desk most of the day, it like went up and down three or four times and it was awesome. I could be at my desk studying for a few hours and not get, uh, you know, too sore on the keister. So what is a useful gift? And what would that desk be like which it happened to happen for the first few days that after I got my desk. Last Sunday, I opened it, but I didn't have the space set up yet because what I'm now calling the office used to be Naomi's room. And our daughter, Naomi, who's away at college, um, just lost her bedroom this week because I needed to change it so that I could make it an office to make room for this desk. Uh So for a few days, that desk just sat in cardboard boxes in our living room waiting to be put together, waiting to be assembled and put to use. And so I think 
that that might be something for us to consider as we talk about the spiritual gifts. What good is a spiritual gift if it isn't put into act, action, if it isn't put into use? What good is a spiritual gift if all it does is sit in a beautiful wrapping in our home? What, what good is it? What good is that gift in our life if it isn't in being used for God's purposes in the world. And so here's the big idea this morning that I'm going to break down into three smaller points so we can dissect it. The Spirit's gifts are supernatural abilities for strengthening the body alive in you. The Spirit's gifts are supernatural abilities for strengthening the body alive in you. So let's take the first one supernatural abilities. Take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's in the U version, or you can grab a paper Bible and have a look. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the entire chapter, 1 through 31, is all about the gifts of the Spirit as Paul instructs the church. So let's start off by just looking at the first six verses. We're just going to read verses 1 through 6 of 1 Corinthians 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray by mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Number one, these are supernatural abilities. Let's pray. God, we ask you to reveal a truth. To our souls today. God, speak by your spirit to our spirits, that we would become people who are equipped and empowered and gifted by you to be useful vessels in this world, to strengthen the body, to lift up the dead, and that your gifts would be alive in us and in Eagle Life Church and in the Treasure Valley and all around the world. God, awaken your people to the power of the gifts alive in your church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, this past week, our staff here at Eagle Life Church had the opportunity to have a two-day staff and prayer retreat. We had a wonderful time on Tuesday and Wednesday uh, getting our thoughts together, putting our team together, and talking about how the Holy Spirit has gifted each of us as members of the staff to work together to fulfill the purpose of the church. And the purpose of the church is to help people experience Jesus in a life-changing way. And so we had a lot of exercises and team building uh, things. We had the opportunity to go to the Titanic escape room at Boise Escapes over on Overland. It was awesome. And we almost made it. We had one and a half minutes over time, so we actually drowned on the Titanic. We didn't escape before the ship sunk, uh, but we almost made it out of there alive. Uh, we had to hold our breath for the last minute and a half, is what they said. Hold your breath, because the ship just went down and you're underwater now. Uh, but we had a great time, and you know what we discovered is that while we were in that uh, environment trying to escape the escape room, is that each one of us offered something to the effort to escape that was unique to each one of us. One person was observant about that. Another person could understand the relationships that were happening in the clues that were giving us. Another person spotted something that was unusual, and it led another person to look at that thing more closely, and then they were able to discover the clue, and all those parts working together. In fact, this morning, while I was sitting down there worshiping, one of my characteristics came out during worship service. Uh, we did a personality test called the Enneagram. I don't know if any of you have done that, but it's basically the numbers one through nine, and it helps you understand your personality type. 
And I took this test and I discovered that I'm a mix of a several different things, but my predominant trait is I am what they call a reformer. I'm the kind of person that always wants it to be better than it was before. You know, always wants it to be one step better than last time. And so this morning when I came into church and there was a bunch of extra chairs because three weeks ago the place was packed and there was no seats left. And so I thought, man, Father's Day, we're going to have more people. And a lot of you responded and said, you know, reserve your seats because you're coming to church. The reason we're asking you to do that is to make sure we have room because we have to do six foot distancing and all that stuff. So we had a bunch of extra chairs set up for Father's Day. And it turns out not that many people came. Uh, last Sunday, there was some sickness and other things that kept people away. But when I got here this morning, I'm like, yeah, no, not very many people reserved a seat, and we have a lot of chairs set up. And so the reformer in me was like, I got to get the chairs put away and tidy up. You know, I got to make this better than it was last week, because otherwise everybody will be sitting at the back, and the whole front will be empty, and that's hard to preach to, to an empty uh, front, which it's pretty empty this morning, so... Um, So I thought I had that all taken care of, but then while we were worshiping, I noticed, and maybe you didn't notice because you're not a reformer, but this microphone stand right here is up on the leg of that keyboard right there, and so it's not straight. (sighs) So much better. Yeah, picky, picky. Yeah, John, you're not a one. (laughs) And one of the blessings of being a one is that I spot those details. I notice. I mean, if you ask me where some shop or business is in town, I can tell you. Because I I see every sign, I read every word, I know where all the businesses are. I mean, I talk to some of you and I'm like, it's right on Shinden next to the Kentucky Fried Chicken. And you're like, Kentucky Fried Chicken? We have those in Idaho? (laughs) Like, you have no idea. I'm like, yeah, it's next to the laundromat, which is next to the liquor store, which is by the dry cleaner. And you're like, where? Like, you have no idea. You're like, between Eagle and Five Mile are all those things? And it's like, yes, all those things and more. (laughs) You know, they're across the street from the Shusi place. uh, And you just don't even know. So that's a blessing. Because I know where I am. I know where I'm at. I always know where North is. I always know where South is. Uh, I just know. And it's part of being a one. But a curse of being a one is that nothing is ever good enough. And a lot of times, unless I can do it perfectly, I won't do it. Unless I, like my garage is a perfect example. I have grand plans for organizing my garage. Shelving and automatic things that lower from the ceiling and hook the bikes on them and slowly take them back up to the rafters. You know, I have all these great plans, but I don't have time to do them. I don't have money to do them. And so guess what? The garage is a mess. It's a wreck. It's a disaster. We can't park our cars in there. It's filled with bikes that I want to fix because, I mean, it's just one thing broken on the bike. So we don't need to get rid of it because I'm a reformer. I can't just get rid of the bike. I need to fix it and then sell it. So we have six people in our family and probably have 20 bikes in our garage. So there's this beauty to my personality, but there's also like this negative part of my personality. And what can happen in the church is we can say, oh, look how God brought all these personalities together, and, you know, Brad is the wacko that he is, and we all can make up for that because we're not insane. And so you all are good, and you're like, Brad, it's okay if the microphone stand isn't perfectly straight. 90% of people didn't even notice, so chill, brother. Uh, And you help me. But that isn't spiritual gifts. Your personality is part of how God has made you. It's part of who you are. But a spiritual gift is not a personality type. Even a one can be gifted by God supernaturally to practice a spiritual work. And that spiritual ability given by the Holy Spirit can be momentary for a specific thing, or it can be an ongoing developing trait that is cultivated by the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. So, we're going to get to the particulars of each of the spiritual gifts another time, but for example, prophecy is one of the spiritual gifts. 
speaking prophetically may not be part of your personality, but God could supernaturally empower you to proclaim a prophetic message. And that message may be contrary to your personality type. And God may do it once in a specific moment to cause a turning point in someone's life, or the Holy Spirit may develop in you the gift of prophecy, where even though it isn't part of your personality, over time, the Holy Spirit uses that gift of prophecy over and over and over to supernaturally empower you to speak. And then you look back on your life and you say, wow, God made me a prophet. Even though my personality type might be introvert. God used me to be an extrovert prophet, despite my personality. There's other times where you're an extrovert like me, and God drops prophetic messages into your heart, and you speak those out of the strength of your personality. But when you're doing that, you're still doing it by the supernatural empowerment of God not just because that's your personality. And here's the thing that I've discovered, is that when I'm operating in my personality type, I am very safe and comfortable and most of the time feel good. One of the bummers about being a reformer is I'm never happy with my own work either. And I'm always beating up myself for things that I should have done that I didn't because I notice them, I see them, they irritate me. I observe it, and I'm like, man, I need to fix that. It's been that way for too long, but I know I don't have the time. Okay, I'm getting too wrapped up in it. So that can be really comfortable, but I can operate in my personality and not do any spiritual work. I just feel happy and content and satisfied. But when the Spirit supernaturally empowers me, then the personality that I'm living out becomes the work of God. And it makes a change in the world. There was a few years ago that I was at men's retreat. And I was praying as we do a lot of at men's retreat. And there was a time of worship happening. And the Holy Spirit gave me a message. He spoke into my heart a message about someone trying to live up to the expectation of their leader rather than living up to what God had called them to do. And I was like, wow, okay, God. And at first I thought it was for me because that's a really good message. You know, like, oh, I need to listen, you know, I need to follow what who's God called me to be, not the expectations of my leader. And, and so at first I thought it was that, and God's like, no. And this, this prompting just kept coming back to my spirit. And I can't exactly explain it. It wasn't an audible voice. But the Holy Spirit said, this isn't for you. I want you to speak it to someone else. And so I was just looking around like, well, who? <laughs> who do you want me to speak it to? And he directed me to the person who was playing the keyboard on the worship team. And so here we are at men's retreat with like 300 men gathered in the room. The worship team is leading songs. And the Holy Spirit says, go interrupt the keyboard and singer and tell them this message. And I'm like, what? What? You want me to go up there in front of everybody while we're singing and worshiping and speak to that person? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you know, the reformer in me couldn't let that happen because that would interrupt what's going on in the service. That would be a distraction and people would be annoyed and it would, and that person would be distracted, you know. I mean, bless that man's heart. That would be awful to be, you know, you're playing and trying to lead other people in worship and someone comes up to you, you might pull your weapon and be like, back off, Creepo, what are you doing up here? You know, I didn't know what was going to go down. And so I let some time pass, and the Holy Spirit just kept saying, go, 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 go. And I finally went. So I walked up to this gentleman, and I said, hey, I, I mean, I know we just met, but I feel like the Lord gave me a message for you. And so I told him uh, what the message was, and he said, wow, thank you. I really needed that. And then he went back to playing his music, and I walked away. And I prayed for him as I was walking away, and I, I told him I'd pray for him, and I prayed for him. And it was like three months later, he got in touch with me, 
And he said, I want you to know that when I was at men's retreat that week, the weight of my work was weighing so heavily on me that I wanted to kill myself. He said, I wanted to leave my wife and kids because I knew I was a failure and the expectations that had been put on me by my leadership was not who I was and I couldn't do it. And he said, but that message changed my heart. You see, it's in my personality to tell people what I think about them because I'm a reformer. But when the Holy Spirit empowers you, You can speak a word of life to someone at a moment of crisis that you would have never perceived. At a moment in time when you're like, no, that's not a good time. But the Spirit's empowerment makes it the right time. So number one, the Spirit's gifts are supernatural abilities. Number two, the Spirit's gifts are supernatural abilities for strengthening the church. We read about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 and following. Will you take a look at that with me? To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You might want to underline or highlight that. It's for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability of distinguishing between spirits. Wow, I didn't realize what a tongue twister that was. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, right? Supernatural abilities, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. I wouldn't make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, giving greater honor, oh, sorry, there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. There's a lot in here. And I'm going to stop right there, Tammy. We'll come back to verses 26 through 31 in a second. I'm an Idaho potato. Right here, I hope you can see this if you're watching online or in person. It's kind of small. But this is what? Mr. Potato Head. Do you have one of these? Have you ever played with one of these, Isaiah? No? Oh, you have. Okay. Well, I'm going to need your help with this one in a minute. Will you mind helping me? Okay. Okay. Now, what body parts do a potato have? 
eyes, right? When you peel your potato, you got to pluck out its eyes, right? Or it's, you're going to get that nasty black dot when you mash them, you know? Potato heads have other body parts. So just imagine, and I should have done this, actually. It would have been, it would have, would have been fun. Down there, I have a bunch of them. What if all that was on this body were eyes? It'd be more like a real potato, right? But how could the body hear? How could it smell if all it was was eyes? And you know, you ask the question, what about someone who's blind? Or what about someone who is hard of hearing or deaf? Am I diminishing those people? No. But when you're deaf, how do you hear? Talia was an example of this a few weeks ago when she spoke another language. Deaf people hear with their eyes. They watch the hand signs of people who can speak American Sign Language or Mexican Sign Language. There's many kinds of sign language. They hear with their eyes. And the deaf are often mute because they can't hear. They don't know how to speak. And so how do they speak? With their hands. And so a body can function with some of the parts missing. But when the eyes are taken away from a body, now the hands and the feet have new jobs. Now the hands and the feet have to see, and the ears have to see. So if you ever have observed a blind person navigating the city streets, they have a cane in their hand so that they can feel what's in front of them. And they wave that cane back and forth from side to side. They can feel rather than see a step. They can touch the pole instead of seeing the pole. And it's a way that the body can adapt to missing parts. Now, another thing happens is that a body can have all of its parts, feet, hands, eyes, ears, mouth, nose, but the parts are not arranged appropriately. The, the ear is seeing, the hand is smelling, the eyes are tasting, the ear is grabbing, and a hand is listening, and a nose is adorning the top of the head. <laughs> and the feet are an arm. And so, what would we call this? A mess. Some people might call it art, Picasso, right? <laughs> this is a Picasso potato head. These, are, these cost $10,000 instead of $10 because Picasso made them. And this is what happens when we're kids and we play with these, right? Is we stick the wrong parts in the wrong place so that we can see how silly it looks. And, you know, you put that hand there under the eyes, and it kind of looks like a nose, right? It's like, yeah, I mean, I know that's a thumb, but it kind of looks like a nose. But will it smell? Nope. <laughs> and sometimes I think these things happen in the church, and that's what Paul's talking about, is you have a church with no eyes, and this church can serve with its hands, it can smell with its nose, it can walk with its feet, but it doesn't see the needs of the kingdom of God in the world around it. And so without eyes, the body is ineffective. And other parts have to compensate. And the hands start trying to see. And they might see some things, they might feel some things, they might be able to do some good, but man, how much sweeter it would be if the body had eyes and the eyes were in the right spot. And so as we talk about prophecy, tongues, serving, administration, leading, mercy, there's like 19 spiritual gifts listed in the Bible. We have to ask ourselves at Eagle Life Church, are we equipped with each of the gifts? Or are we missing something? Are the hands not in the right place? Do we have hands doing the work of eyes or ears? And then we need to get them in the right place. And so Isaiah and Elena, can you help me? Your brother and sister, so I figure you can probably do this together with social distancing. Can you put this right? 
can you make my Mr. Potato Head not a Picasso, but like the way it's supposed to be? And if Elena will help you, Isaiah, can she help you? You guys put it back together um, and make that guy look like he's supposed to look. The reason that all the parts need to be working together and in the right place is because it strengthens the whole body. A hand can do the work of an eye, but if the eye is really doing the work, then the hand is stronger. But when the hand is doing the eye's work, the hand becomes weaker because it isn't doing things that only a hand can do. So one of the things about blind, uh, the blind is they can't always carry things in their hands because then their hands aren't available to see. So they can do less with their hands for the work that hands are meant for to carry and hold things because their hands are doing the work of eyes. And in the same way, the church body becomes weak when a hand can't fully do all that God made it to do because it's doing the work of another part of the body. And I see that on display in my family, in our church, and in the church. If we overemphasize, oh, look at what you two did. Oh, a very proud moment. Look at that. Now, what do you think about this body? All that's missing is a potato hat. There we go. I'm a hat collector, so, you know, that's how you always finish it off. It's with a good hat. See, now the body is stronger. The feet can do the feet's job and hold this guy in good balance. The hands can reach out and do the work of hands. The nose can smell. The mouth can taste. Now, here's what's really fun about the body of Christ. Some of you go, well, Pastor Brad, those are some really nice eyes up there. I'm a set of eyes, but I'm not as pretty as those eyes. And so I would just rather not be a part of the body. And so we lose our eyes, even though God's given us some eyes, because the eyes won't serve because they're cross eyes. <laughs> And some of us here are called to be a mouth. God's given us the spiritual ability to speak. But we look at that beautiful mouth with its lipstick and perfect tongue and teeth and beautifully puffy lips, and we go, I need some Botox or I'm not going to speak because I'm buck teeth. And we say, well... If I can't be the perfect teeth, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna work. And we leave the body. If there's no mouth, where will the sense of taste be? If there's no mouth, where will the declarative word of God be spoken? You see, the body needs all of its parts. And you may feel like your buck teeth are cross eyed. <laughs> But it isn't about you, is it? It's about the Spirit of God giving you supernatural ability to strengthen the bodies. And to strengthen the body. And how beautiful would it be if the handlebar mustaches, the cross-eyed Christians, the buck-teethed believers were all doing their part in the kingdom of God, and this ugly thing still was able to accomplish more than the beautiful ones sitting on the shelf. Because it was the body of believers working together, fulfilling the strength of what God had called them to do. So, our big idea, number one, supernatural abilities. Number two, for strengthening the body. And then number three, these gifts are alive in you. These gifts are alive in you. And it's one thing to hear about these gifts and go, wow, those are really beautifully wrapped gifts. Look at them. Wow, I mean, boy, that would be beautiful. All those gifts. Ah. Oh. Bye. <laughs> no, these gifts need to be put to use. These gifts need to be put into action. The gifts need to be activated in the church so the body can be strengthened. That's what God is calling us to do. And I know that in our congregation, whether you're online or here in person, whether you're an elder or a deacon, 
whether you're on the media team or the music team, whether you serve at a women's Bible study or a coffee talk, whether you make donuts for fellowships or whether you serve a meal to someone who's uh, recovering from a, a medical procedure, all of those tasks can be done. But when the supernatural anointing of the Holy Spirit provides spiritual gifting to donuts and spaghetti and music and media and deacons and pastors, when the supernatural comes, then we are made alive in Christ. And the death of this world is no champion because we are full of the Spirit, abounding in His good gifts that are for you. So I'm going to invite our musicians to come back, and we want to spend some time. We're ending a little bit early on purpose today so that we don't end early. (laughs) We want to allow you some time to speak with the Holy Spirit. We want to give you a moment to interact with Him. And here's what I want to invite you to do. Before we get to the moment in a mo- in later, before we get to the moment later when we open the gifts, at this time, I want you to ask God, I need you. Because I don't just want a gift. I want a supernaturally empowered gift. And so how do we attain that supernatural ability? It's by being connected to the seed that we talked about last week, the fruit. And so right now, during this first song, all we want to ask you to do is to say, I want more of you, Jesus. I need more of your Holy Spirit. And I want you to activate yourself. Don't just sit back and listen to the song and sleep. Get up. Get ready. It may mean you stand. It may mean you come and kneel at the front. It may mean you turn around at your seat and kneel down before God to activate your spirit, and say, Holy Spirit, I need you. And the musicians have been praying about this. The pastors have been believing God for this. We want you to have a moment with the Holy Spirit. And then later, I'll come back before we sing again, and I want to talk to you about unwrapping the gifts and seeing about putting them into motion in your life today and tomorrow and the next day. So would you join us and let's worship, Pastor Laura. As Pastor Brad was speaking this morning, I was thinking about gifts and, you know, why, why do we give gifts? We give gifts to show our love for people that we're giving to. And when you receive a gift, you receive a tangible expression of the love of the giver. And I feel like that's what these gifts are for us, is God showing his love by gifting us with these abilities. And when we use these gifts, they become our way of experiencing God's love in our life. But if we use them without that hold, without that without realizing who it is that the giver is for us. You know, when I see a gift that I've been given, I always think of the person who gave it to me, right? And so when we use these gifts and we remember who our God is and how much he loves us and how much we love him, then that, that's where that gift really can plug into the power of the Holy Spirit. So as Pastor Brad said this morning, we're going to do this new song. It's called Nothing Else, and it's just a prayer that says, I just want to be in your presence. I just want you, God. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than just want you. 
Make that your prayer this morning. I'm caught up. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I When I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry. When I just sang another song, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just, I just want you. And nothing else, nothing else.
Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Holy Spirit, we want you. The gifts are a fruit of our relationship with you. The gifts are the evidence that we're in relationship with you. The gifts are the growth that develops in the life of a believer, in the life of a church, because we're in your presence. And so, Jesus, we're sorry for the, thing, the times that we made it about us. We're sorry for the times where we rejected you because we were cross-eyed. Lord, we're sorry for the times that we rejected your words because we're buck teeth. God, we're sorry for the times that we didn't stretch our hand out to serve another because we bite our nails or we're missing a finger or we somehow feel like our skin or our touch is not welcome. God, I'm sorry for when I've come to your work with my own agenda, with my own preferences, with my own personality. I'm sorry. Because Holy Spirit, I want it to be your agenda. I want it to be your preferences. I want it to be your work that's done. Cross-eyed, bowed-legged, bucked teeth. Jesus, I want you to supernaturally work in my life, in my family, in our church, and in this community. Because then your name will be lifted up. Your praise will be declared. Your anthem will be sung. And true change, true salvation, real healing will take place.
Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Jesus. Scripture says that to some is given the gift of tongues. Scripture says that someone should interpret when the tongues are given to the body, and so that's what happened. And Scripture tells us that if there's someone, if there's not someone there to interpret, then the one who gave the message in tongues should ask for an interpretation and then give it. And that's what we just experienced is Eva spoke a message in tongues, and then the Holy Spirit gave her the interpretation to encourage and strengthen the body. And what was the message? What did you hear? Worship me. Worship the Lord. I'm your healer. I'm your provider. Ask. I'm with you. So let's respond to that message, will you? And Pastor Laura, I don't know if you changed keys or went somewhere else. <laughs> but let's spend a moment um, to, to worship the Lord. And let's respond to what, he, what the Lord just said through Eva to all of us. Will you lead us in a moment of worship? You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in.
don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. That I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Can't control your world. 
that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Lift your voices, everybody in the room. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Jesus. We want you. 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 No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. When our church staff met earlier this week, one of the things that we did was we drove around Eagle and we walked uh, all the way through downtown and just asked the Lord to show us what our community needs and we prayed. And when we came back and we began to write down all of the things that we saw that the Holy Spirit showed us that we were praying for, we recognized a theme of healing that in our community, 
God is calling us as a church to offer healing to those who are in brokenness, those in addiction, those in financial stress, those in emotional uh, harm and physical healing, those who are sick and downcast. And one of the gifts of the Spirit is healing. And I just wonder this morning if there's anyone here who needs a touch of the Lord for healing in any of those ways. And you would just slip up your hand and say, that's me, I need a healing from God. I can't give it, but the Spirit's gift of healing could be poured out this morning. Fred, Reuben, I see your hand, thank you. Ron, pray for you. Uh, Cheryl? Shirley. And Shirley? Okay. Shirley. 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 Okay. And I saw uh, John's hand and Ivan's and Paul's. You know, as soon as I start mentioning names, then I forget names. Sorry. I want to pray for healing. And, you know, it's social distancing, so we want to be mindful of all of that, you know, a tradition in the church is to lay hands on the sick, Scripture says, and they will recover. Um, so if you are one of those people who raised your hand and you would like someone to break the rules and lay hands on you, uh, you can ask that. But otherwise, let's just respect that for now and let's pray um, for these needs. And you can extend a hand as if you could lay hands on them and let's pray for them, okay? Would you pray for the people around you and in this room? Lord, you saw each hand. God, you know the faith that it took to say, that's me. And your word says that the faith the size of a mustard seed could move a mountain. And so, Jesus, we pray that the mountains that are in the way of each of these who raise their hand, and I'm sure that online somebody put a raised hand emoji in the comments saying, I need a healing touch. God, we pray for healing. God, some of these needs may have been chronic. Some of them may just be this morning. They haven't been feeling well. There may be other needs. God, we ask you to reach out from heaven and provide this gift of healing now. Lord, that these ones who said in faith, I need healed, that that prayer of faith would be answered, God, that you would uh, take every cell that's broken if it's physical, that you would provide a new job or a, a forgiveness of debt if the need is financial. Lord, we pray for emotional scars that are weighing heavy on the spirits that, that keep some of us awake at night because our minds are just caught in the pain and the hurt and the trauma of our emotions. God, we ask for healing to sweep through the hearts of your people. God, do something miraculous, a supernatural event that can only be said to have been done by God. We believe you for it, Jesus. We believe you for it, Jesus. Work your healing, work your miracle to strengthen the body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Some have said that there's 19 gifts of the Spirit. <laughs> and we could go through them all this morning and one by one say, hey, let's ask the Lord to do that. But here's what I want to invite you to do. I've provided a resource for you on the church website. Two things. It's on the blog or in the, you know, if you go to the church website where it has all the posts, you'll be able to see some resources. And it's called Discovering Your Spiritual Gifts. And there's two things there. There's a PDF that is, it's called a spiritual gifts survey. And it's a way for you to answer some questions about how you see God working in your life. And so you say, oh, I see God using me to provide mercy to people in different ways. And it asks all these questions and you kind of score yourself like a personality test, you know, one to four. And then at the end, you add them all up and it helps you discover that maybe God has given me the spiritual gift of discernment. Okay, so fill that out and get some information. And then there's a second PDF that says it's a biblical uh, definition of each of the spiritual gifts. 
So prophecy is the spiritual ability given by God to help a person proclaim God's word. And then it explains a couple scenarios where that might happen. And then there's also some scripture that go along with that that give you examples of it, that gift being used in scripture. And so if you discover that your gift is discernment, go read discernment. Understand what that gift is. Study those scriptures and show yourself approved and then ask the Lord to help you take that gift and unwrap it and put it into action in the world so that people can enjoy not just the beauty of the gift, but the usefulness of that gift of discernment. And I want to invite all of you to give me feedback, um, to share with me, you know, send me an email and let me know what it is you learned and how God brought that together. And if you would like, I would love to offer um, a, a life group called Shape, Discovering Your, your God-Given Potential, I think is the name of the material. But it's helping you unlock that so that you can put that work into action in the church. And then I want to encourage you to do it. Begin to practice your spiritual gifts. Put them into use and allow the Lord to develop and grow and multiply and nurture and care for that gift as you uh, put it into practice in your life. And you may not get it right at the first, you know, you may be cross-eyed. <laughs> you may get a bowed walk at first. You may stumble, but the Holy Spirit will help you as uh, he works in your life. So will you stand with me? And you're free to go if you want to go, but I know the worship team is prepared to stay if there's some of you who would like to linger in the Lord's presence and continue to seek him. So um, let me pray, and then you're either free to go or free to stay, however uh, the Holy Spirit leads you. Father, we thank you for your presence that you poured out on us today. God, we're believing in faith that this uh, tongues and interpretation and this moment of prayer for healing, God, that these will be answered. And just like two weeks ago when we had a dozen answered prayer requests in seven days right here in our church, God, I pray for all of these who raise their hand to be able to testify, to give feedback, to say the thing that I raised my hand for has been answered and God did a miracle. God, we want the gifts, but more than that, we want you. So set a fire in our hearts, Lord. Make a way, break a chain, pay the path, Provide an opportunity for us to know you more, to worship you deeper, to experience you greater. That, Lord, even when we don't see it, we know you're working. Even when we don't feel it, we know you're working. Help us to rely not in our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hello, welcome to Eagle Life Church. I am so thankful that you have joined us today for this worship service. Please grab your phone right now and save this number in your contacts, 208-352-6002. Name that contact, ELC text message. This will help you interact with the church during social isolation and really anytime. You can use this phone number to give, you can join a life group by texting life group, or you can text the word prayer, click the link and fill out the form so that we can pray for you. If you'd like to join a life group, we have some exciting groups that are happening right now. We have groups that are happening with kids on Marco Polo. Our ladies book club continues to meet weekly on Thursday nights. We want you to join us, not just on Sunday morning, but throughout the week by being a part of our life groups. And finally, would you connect with us online? Check out eaglelifechurch.org, like our page on Facebook, or follow us on Instagram at Eagle Life Church. We hope that today's service helps you experience Jesus in a life-changing way.